Hey, what's going on, everybody? So, I've had a lot of questions about DC Sports 87's uh, consignments, how I ship my stuff and all that. So, I'm just going to go through it just uh, in case there's any kind of questions on to it. In no means am I an expert onto this. It's just what I do. And I haven't had anybody from there saying, hey, you did it jacked up or something like that. So, um, not too sure if that's like the standard what I'm doing here or whatever. It just... Just follow what they say and pretty much what I do on to it all. So I'm going to pull up their website here real quick. Then I'll go through with what I do. So maybe, yep, yeah, okay. So if you go to dcsports87.com, I'll put a link in the description. Uh, if you go up here to the facts, it tells you what all you need to do right now if you send under 20 cards, which have to be a value of $25 or more. It takes two business days to get it posted from the time they get it in. So if they get it on a Monday, it's probably going up like either Wednesday or Thursday night. Um, Saturday or Saturday. Wow. Standard 13 business days, which is a lot quicker. Was it 18 at one time? All right. So this is the information they want on there. And I'll show you guys what I do. You have to write consignment, first, last name, or full name, however you want to say it, email address, phone number. Now, if you're a first-time customer, they want you to print this off and send in with it. Catch is, there's nothing to click on to print here. So what I would do, I had it here a second ago. There we go. What I do is I open the image in a new tab, boom, and then I just uh, go to file print from here. Or you can save it to your computer or whatever, you know, onto it, save image as, stuff like that. All right. Now, you won't get your login information until they get your first package. And then they're supposed to contact you by email. I think I waited like a day or two after I know they received it. I sent them a quick message and then they got back to me with all the information onto it. It was pretty, it's really, really easy to do compared to what I've heard other people use in Probstein and stuff like that. All right, right here, address you mail to if you're mailing by USPS. If you're going UPS or FedEx, boom. And they pretty much answer all the questions on here. Here's your payout right here. And it, I mean, this is why you don't really send in card. You wants cards like $5 or more. They're rookie, serial numbered, stuff like that, autos. Because at a dollar, say your card sells at 99 cents because that's how he starts all of his auction, you're basically losing 75 plus 29. You're getting like four cents. It don't pay for that. So if you start setting in $5 and up and setting in stacks, you can. <clears throat> Here's how they pay you. PayPal goods and services. You do a check by the mail, all that stuff. And that's their fees. Check by mail, UPS. Bank wire has to be 10000 up, ACH, you just give them your stuff. And I believe they do that. Oh, there it is. Yeah, you just uh, leave a message or a text and stuff like that. So really easy to do. Um, there's the kind of cards they'll take. This is what happens if they go unsold. If they go unsold, you're just not getting them back. So that's why they don't want to have to keep relisting your stuff because you're sending in stuff that's just not selling. I mean, just one of those things on to it. A lot of times I just send in all my autos. Sometimes I get 99 cents. Sometimes I get 10, 15 bucks. I just, stuff that I just don't have time to move myself. And that's pretty much it. All right. It talks about a lot of the other stuff about your packaging, but I'm going to go over it in the video. All right. So let me get my chair turned around here. This is my next package going out to DC Sports. So, two PSA cards. I had to take them out of the sleeves. They don't want stuff sleeved up. So, I'm being careful so it doesn't get scratched. Top loaders, I just stick them all into one team bag. You want to make sure they're fresh, clean top loaders. You want this stuff. They're not going to replace what you put the stuff in. But you want to make sure your stuff's presentable. So, clean, fresh top loaders, sleeves, all that stuff. Little stack of cards in here. Um, just stuff that I just won't be grading at all. Now, for my one touches, I do team bag them. Yeah, I know a lot of people, why are you setting the one touch? Well, they display better. This here will display better 
than it would on in a, in a top floater. And that's what it's been in. I'm just not changing them out. <coughs> hmm. Excuse me there. All right. So I do team bag these individually. I don't know if that's right or wrong. Never got told I was wrong for doing it. All right. So what I'll do normally is I'll just take the stuff, put them in some bubble envelopes. I'll do something like, I don't know. Let me get them in here. That way they're kind of situated right. Kind of doing part of this as I'm actually shipping it out to them here today. Now, my idea is I always try to protect my cards as much as possible. I do steal the bubble envelopes. Again, don't know if that's the right or wrong answer. I know DC sometimes looks at my videos, so he might be able to comment on here. If that's right or wrong, I don't know. But I try to give as much padding as I can to boxes. All right, what I do, I get a piece of paper cut in the quarters. This here was actually stuck to some tape. I write consignment, my full name, my email address, and my phone number. Now, this is because I'm a returning customer. Otherwise, you got to get that form as a first-time submitter and fill it out, print it off type deal, and you're good to go. What I do then, take a package... I use rubber bands because I'm a. I do a lot of grading. You guys know. That way, I don't tape it on here. That way, if they just want to take my stuff and put it with it, however, oh, that's probably not a good way of doing it because the way I have it. Uh, we'll do the other one. I try to look and see which way is the best on these. Yes, yeah, probably a better one. Normally a little more neater when I do this, but this is just for video purposes. Here, I'm going to do it back here just because I can get my hands around stuff and not worry about hitting the camera. Take it around like that. My idea is that, I don't know if they need this for anything right off the bat, but they can take it off, stack it with my cards, whatever it may be. Then all I do is take this stuff, bubble wrap, put it in a box, choose USPS, and I mail it out. Uh, like I said, really, really simple to do. Um, but I've been getting a lot of people hitting me up about it. I can see where a lot of the stuff, you know, it's a lot to get right off the website and go through with it. But it's pretty easy to do offhand. I mean, uh, it's an easy process to where once they get it, you'll get... I'll show you guys. I don't mind showing my dashboard on here. Wait, let me make sure there's nothing personal on it, though. Okay, I'll take that to there. So this is what you'll see in your dashboard. Your package will come in. It'll say received. It'll give you an estimated date of upload. And then the day it's uploading, usually in the evening, you'll get something. It'll say date uploaded. And then you'll get an eBay link. And then you'll get, you know, what it was under 20 standard whatever. And then down below here, you'll get all your cards. Now, these are the ones that are live right now. That's why they look that way. And it just shows you once they're paid, gives you an idea what it's sold for, how much I cleared onto it, stuff like that. Let me go back up. And you can print all this stuff if you want onto it. And there's a button on here that you can request payout, but I don't want to show like my balance and stuff on it. That's why I'm trying to keep a little bit of it private. Uh, let's see here. I'll show you what it looks like on eBay, and I'll give you guys a little pinpointers onto it. So here's my stuff going off tonight. It wasn't big. It was just something. I just stack of stuff I wanted to get rid of. Um, I know I got some stuff have bids on so hopefully it does i've never not had anything not sell i sent into them this might be a first <laughs> there's a few on there so what you could do and we'll go back let me go back to dashboard so we'll go back to this this stuff already went off so if i take this little code up here that's where my auctions listed under like where that stuff is right here 
go to your selling, go to research, go to Terapeak, type in that little code or paste it there, hit research. Well, let's go last 30. No, I hope it don't go more. All right, some of this stuff might not be mine because you can see that there. Let's just do, I think this just ended seven days ago. Make sure. Yeah, pretty much right. So if I do this, I know the item's been paid for because once the auction ends, until it's actually paid for, it will not show up on Terapeak. So I know there's some stuff on here. Now, like, that's not mine. But this stuff here all sold recently. And I know for a fact that um, there's still some pending payments on to. But you could always check to see this, how you know if your stuff's been paid for or not. Once it gets paid for... Usually the next business day in the evening time frame is when I notice their stuff updates between like 8 p.m. and 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. A little bit later sometimes, you'll start seeing all your transactions going through, your cards posted, and all that stuff. And yes, they do start the all auctions off at 99 cents on there. If you got something you want for fixed pricing, I think, if I recall right from reading it, not 100% positive, it has to be worth $5,000 or more. You tell them what you want to sell it at and what you're willing to accept onto is like a best offer, and they'll do that for you too. But again, that's got, I think the minimum is either five or 10000 I think it's five. But it's it's on that fax if you guys want to get in on that stuff too. But hopefully this helps out a little bit onto it uh, with knowing, you know, how to use uh, DC Sports packaging your stuff up and everything, and then how you can go through. I don't know if I, this got paid for yet. And this is kind of a cool thing because if – I think you can – let me see something here. No. Um, a lot of times you could check for cards like say – you know how you guys do eBay comps? And a lot of people just go to what's been sold on there. Well, that's what because it was sold. You don't know if it was paid for. You could try to dig out the exact uh, item onto here and go by the date it's sold and all that stuff and see if it was it paid for. That's another little trick to the thing. All right, everybody. Hopefully this video helps some people out out there. Um, do not hesitate using DC Sports if you just want to sell stuff. Um, I just moved away from doing eBay. Canceled my store and everything. It just, it's not feasible for me with a lot of the headaches going on. Um, that's why I pay DC to put my stuff up on there. I mean, you got to put up with all the eBay headaches that come across the board with people. So, just a little bit of an easier process on to it. Again, a lot of the information's on there. As you guys can see, I think all my stuff listed minus like the under 20s. They might have showed up a day early. But if you look at my standards... They've all been before the date. Except for this one here. Um, I think that's because there was a weekend or there was a glitch. But everything's pretty much on point. So don't stress using them all, uh, using these guys at all. Very good. They answer their messages all on here. Um, but again, if you guys have questions, you can hit them up. If I can help you out, I will. Just let me know. Other than that, guys, take care. Catch you all next video.